Hey guys, Stephen Bogren here from Pro Physique. Today, what I want to talk about is that I didn't fucking place. So hey guys, hopefully you're all having a wonderful start to your week so far and a happy Monday. Um, you know, <clears throat> man is it interesting. It's been an interesting, interesting uh, weekend. So we uh, drove up to Charleston, South Carolina on Thursday. Paul, myself, uh, Caitlin, and our friend and competitor, Deiraja, um, all to go see the NPC Junior USA's. Um, show and to of course be there for clients so Paul had five girls competing I had one um, so my one client was April Sauter um, it was her second show ever her first year competing her first show was about three and a half weeks ago and um, you know very very proud very happy uh, she got first call out to her second show ever her first national level show um, and she scored six so just missing placement um, in the B class so really, really happy, very positive um, experience for us. Uh, April's super happy about it. And you know, we're gonna take some time off and go do what we need to do. Um, but, you know, I had you know another client who also um, didn't place at uh, her show and it was not what we expected, right? Um, <clears throat> looking at her, I was like, wow, she's gonna be really competitive, like the conditioning's there, like glute ham tie-ins there, um, you know. And so it was very, very surprising um, when she said, hey, I got first call outs. And I was like, okay, awesome, I expected that. Um, but it looks like fifth or sixth. And I said, whoa, um, wow, okay. So let's talk about what happened, right? Um, because I think there's a couple ways to, to kind of deal with this situation and to, and to deal with um, you know, this happening. Um, so first and foremost, um, Jesse did a great job handling it with, you know, a lot of, uh, she was very poised, she didn't, you know, like, take it personally, she didn't implode, nothing, nothing bad, right? <clears throat> and so we said, okay, um, was there anything that we know that we could have improved upon? Was there anything that, you know, it sounds like uh, maybe we had trouble? And she said, well, I stumbled on my posing a little bit, okay, um, you know, on my routine. And, you know, that can absolutely make a difference. Um, but I think that it was really when it came down to it, um, we couldn't control who showed up, right? And the girls that came out, apparently very muscular, super crazy lean, um, and it was just a tough, tough class from the sound of it. Um, so when that happens, it can be really discouraging. That can be hard, you know? Um, it can be really hard to, to say, okay, it didn't go as planned. I didn't do the way I was, you know, as well as I was hoping to do. How do I, how do I deal with this? I still have shows coming up. <clears throat> um, there's still more work to do. Like we, we can maybe make a little bit more progress. Like, um, like how do I deal with this? Because a lot of us we're gonna take that, um, and it's really easy to go to a bad place with that. It's really easy to get negative. It's really easy to say, "Well, fuck this sport. This is stupid. The judges are dumb. Bullshit!" Right? And it's easy to get mad. It's, it's easy to get mad and defensive and take it personally. Um, and I have to say, I was super duper proud of her because she didn't do any of that. Um, you know, we, we got on the phone, we talked, she said, all right, let's get better. Let's fucking, let's get our nose put to the grindstone. Let's improve. Let's do everything we can for this next show that we have in three weeks. Um, and let's, let's fucking, let's push it. Let's not leave anything to chance. Let's bring the absolute best possible package that we can. And to date, that's exactly what we did, um, with her last show. She has made significant improvements, not only in her muscularity and proportions, but in her conditioning as well. And so I think that you know it, it was good that she was always looking back. She she was never just looking just at the moment. She was enjoying the moment. Um, you know she was enjoying being on stage and the glam, the glitter. Um, but at the same point, she was also you know looking at it as a whole, looking at it from look at how far I have come. Um, look at where I am now. And I think that that's a great place to be. And I think that that's that's a great terminology and thought process for bodybuilding and physique competitions in general. Look how far I've come. Not necessarily um, always looking, having to say, look how far I still have to go. 
So definitely looking at that, keeping that in mind, and understanding that there's always something to improve upon. We can always get better, as with anything in life. Um, we can always, always improve. Um, but understanding sometimes, like, look how far I've come. Look where I started and where I am today. Being able to give yourself credit for that and being able to have that win. Because that is a win that nobody can take away from you. No judge, no placement, nobody else can ever take away how far you have come. Nobody can ever take away from me how far I have come, right? That is inherently something that belongs to us and that we own it. We can give it away, but nobody can take it from us, right? Um, and so I was unbelievably impressed um, by the maturity of her ability to handle the situation. So, and not only to handle the situation, but to take that adversity and then to rise to the occasion to say, let's fucking go. Let's keep going, let's get better, let's continue to do everything we can within our power to make this better. And so that's what we're doing, right? And sometimes that's what it takes. Not every show is going to work out the way we want it to. Not every placement is going to go the way we want it to. Our friends, our family, um, shit, me as a coach, they're biased towards us, right? I'm biased towards you guys who are my clients. Um, because I see all the hard work that you put in. I see how far you've come. And I want to see that rewarded. Um, but the judges, <clears throat> they're apart from us, right? They haven't been there for your prep. They haven't been watching you over and over. They see you on stage. And they see everybody else who's been doing the same things on stage. Um, and so it doesn't take away from anything that you've put in, from your hard work, from your dedication, and from the fact that even being on that stage in and of itself is a huge accomplishment. But to take that when it doesn't work out, we want to use that as fuel to the fire. We want it to be like gasoline. We want to use it to inspire us, right? For me, I got a chip on my shoulder, you know? And we want to use it to push us to become better. At the end of the day, if we allow our failures to own us, we become worse for it. We become slaves to failure. If we take our failures, we can objectively stop and say, this is how I can get better, this is how I can improve, and use that to further the positive things in our lives, well, we become better people. I think that this is why I love bodybuilding so much. For me personally, me getting on stage is take it or leave it, right? But I love the challenge. I love the process of having things not work out and having those trials and those hard times and having to push through the things that I didn't think that I could do to get better and bettering myself, understanding you know, self-control and self-discipline, um, structure, <clears throat> what, it, what it's like to be making consistent progress um, and doing the right things. And then sometimes understanding that maybe the timing's not right. Maybe I need to back off. Maybe I need to push harder and understanding those things. And I think that that is exactly what I love so much about bodybuilding. It teaches you these things. It forces you to either get the fuck out or to become a stronger, better person through it. Um, you know, there's a saying that my friend told me a long time ago. Um, you know, and he said this, diamonds are made under pressure. If you want to be at your best, and by the way, guys, side note, diamonds have no inherent value. Okay, fun fact, they control the rate at which they're released, which controls the market, so fun fact. Um, yeah, anyways, but they're made under pressure. So this beautiful thing that people seek after, right? They're made under pressure, right? Gold, it's refined in fire, right? It takes that heat, it takes that, that hard situation to refine it to its best. Sometimes that's what it's going to take for us to be refined to our best. So guys, if it hasn't worked out the way you thought it would work out, if it wasn't as easy as you thought it would be, don't let it own you. Do not let that define you. Take that, use it, find something positive, and become better through it.